driving this car a bit faster on the dual carriageway now and you can feel the power you can feel how quick it is to accelerate it doesn't feel tail happy with a four-wheel drive it's very very stable Today I'm in the BMW M5 competition. This is a brand new car. It had 20 miles on the clock when I took it out. Massive, enormous thank you to BMW Chandler Eastbourne for letting me take this car out and have a drive and show you how it all works and what it all does. If you're after a new or used BMW, please pay them a visit. They're great there, so Chandler's Eastbourne. This is the sixth generation new BMW M5 competition LCI 2021. There's a new redesigned M kidney grille with a single piece frame finish in high gloss black. A remodeled apron which has a central air inlet with a mesh design, two large air side inlets and new adaptive LED shadow light headlights with BMW laser lights as an option which look really cool. From the side you have the distinctive strong crease and the M5 badge on the side inlets with 20 inch tyres with a diamond cut mirrored finish on the alloys complemented by those massive red brake calipers. From the rear, darker three-dimensional rear lights and a powerful rear apron with a larger diffuser and two twin 85mm tailpipes and the M rear spoiler give it a really cool look. And in the back you've got 530 litres of luggage capacity thanks to the fact that this is a 5 series with all the hooks and bits you need to attach your shopping and fit stuff in including the ability to put the rear seats down and of course an automatic rear tailgate. The beautiful V8 engine pumps out 625 horsepower from its 4.4 litre power unit and thrusts you forward with 750 newton meters of torque through its 8 speed Steptronic transmission so you can hit 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3 seconds, officially 3.3 but some sites have it down as being under 3 seconds and it looks amazing with this design. Let's look at the technology inside this car. So we've got this massive touchscreen in front of us, also with click wheel control. And you might notice that I have an Android phone right now, not plugged in, but we have Android Auto. Wireless Android Auto on the BMW M5 competition and on new BMWs going forwards. This is the first car I've been in with wireless Android Auto. So as you would expect from Android Auto, but what is different is we've got this new widescreen display. BMW have really upped the ante here with the design and they've added this new way of looking at Android Auto. Let's just change it to satellite. So here we are in Android Auto. This is the app screen. I've got my music that I can go into. I can get a full screen view of everything here. Really, really beautiful to look at. Really next level in terms of seeing your entertainment, seeing what's happening, being able to go back and we got full screen here. And then you notice on the left hand side when it's full screen on the right hand side with the music, the little multimedia player vanishes. If we were to go back to, there we go, you saw it pop back there. If we were to go to Google Maps again, now the player pops up down there again and you can see the time. So the whole screen is being used by Android Auto. Navigate to Chandler's BMW Eastbourne. Navigating to Chandler's Hailsham BMW. This is where I borrowed this car from. If you're after BMW and you're used, please pay them a visit. So you can see uh, Android Auto, wireless, everything that you would expect works here. You can scroll through, you can see the notifications, the notifications. And now when you have navigation, you'll notice down in the bottom left-hand corner, there's now navigation showing as well. And I can go out of here, back to navigation. If I go back to music, then the navigation appears down in the corner. So really, really great. I can have my music and I can still have my navigation. This is, this is you know, a big improvement over Android Auto on smaller screens, having that extra real estate, knowing that you can have your music, you can have your clock, you can see the time and you can see the navigation and it's uh, fantastic. So I can click on the side here to go between the two 
navigation back to here again clock doesn't do anything so that is wireless android auto on the bmw m5 competition and on all bmws going forwards we've looked at android auto wireless now let's go back and look at the main controls for this car you can see here it's showing the information about what's going on on this home screen and it shows your navigation is with android auto and it's showing the music and it's showing that it's connected to my galaxy fold 2 i can see my setup my engine data my tire data i can see the values for my mileage and my efficiency i can see my local traffic situation and i can see the overview of my navigation on there even though it is on android auto it is actually popping up on the main screen and i can move this around and edit it and i can change my widgets here there we go so we go on route preview and now we are done with that done we can add another widget here if we want to so we could go traffic and then done so now on here, I can see my overview of my Android Auto navigation, plus I can also see my music in Android Auto, plus I can see it's connected to my phone, and I can see my local traffic. That's even if I'm not actually inside Android Auto itself. But I can easily go back to Android Auto like this. So that is absolutely awesome. If I tap on the menu button, because I have a click wheel here and buttons down below as well, so I can use a touch screen, but I can also use these click wheels down here. I can now go into this media setting. So media, it gives you the options. So this car has radio, connected music, which will connect to BMW music. We have Spotify, which allows you access to Spotify directly. So even if you don't have a smartphone connected, we have TV in this car. So this is uh, tuned for German TV because I'm guessing this is preset up in Germany. So uh, we can't watch that but um, you can watch TV on this car. You got your Bluetooth audio and you can connect your devices, your screen mirroring with mirror cast, I imagine. And then you've got Android Auto and mobile devices. I see here that it's connected with Android Auto through Wi-Fi wireless, not through USB because the USB is grayed out and it's connected through phone calls as well. And I can personalize this menu and change the order where things are in here. We've got an HDMI input as well. So this car has two screens in the back that you would have seen. And it has HDMI inputs there. There are also four USB type C connectors on the back there. So it's got a lot of connectivity, this car. And this is wireless at Apple CarPlay as well. I've disconnected it from my phone. You can see it works just like Apple CarPlay would be expected. We've got this massive, great, big display of the apps and your navigation and it's a different experience obviously to what you got with android auto which had the maps and then it had a little widget for your music or your directions and then obviously the time in the corner this is much more it's just basically extended it across the length of the screen and then if you go into something like spotify it just extends it across the screen so there is a different philosophy here with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on these cars. As you can see, but it works. And you know, this color, this wallpaper is very bright and very, uh, very easy to see. It looks like a massive iPad or a massive iPhone on your car. Does Apple CarPlay on this massive screen in the M5 competition and you know it's the same on any 5 series as well so we've seen apple carplay we've seen android auto that is how you can connect to your bmw m5 competition or any other 5 series cars as a, a tech in the car car it's extremely teched up there's no doubt about that and if we go into our car settings we've got our driving information so we've got our journey data And this will show your fuel efficiency. So since I got this car, I haven't driven very fast. It's 0.1 miles to where I'm filming this. And you can see here, my fuel efficiency was approximately 6.4 miles per gallon. And I drove an average of uh, 7.9 miles. So um, not very far. My sport displays, engine power in kilowatts, engine torque in newton meters, your pressures for your tires and your oil temperature. Energy flow, so while we're driving, you can see this moving. You can see where the energy is going between the different wheels and between the different axles, which is very cool. 
you got your M menu. So this is where you can configure M1 and M2. So M1 is set up, I set this up a bit earlier, Sport Plus, S3. So this is all in the sportier settings. You can, of course, change it. So you can turn the start stop off or you can leave it on. Probably if you're in a sporty mode and you're using M1 and M2, you don't want to use auto start on off, but you know, it does save you fuel. There's no doubt about that. And it's better for the environment. I can change my C as well. We've got Sports Plus 2. Configure M1 and M2. We can do our heads up display. So we can configure, is it for the road? Is it for the track? Is it sport? We can configure the brightness, the height, the rotation. So I've already turned it to maximum. We can show whether it shows your infotainment. So it will show me my Android Auto music artwork in the head up display, which is very cool. And we've got our instrument cluster. So the instrument cluster, the virtual dashboard, which I will also show you in a little bit, it lets you configure the view. Welcome to the inside, the point of view, view of the inside of the BMW M5 competition. So let's just have a quick look down here at the car controls. So we have here our entertainment settings, our shortcuts, volume, power, on and off. Down here we have our demisting settings, our AC settings, our temperature and fan speed adjustments. This car has heated and cooled seats, and you can have them both on at the same time. This also has, I've set it up with um, filtering of the air, so it's got ionic filtering of the air. And you can see it's very easy to use, very straightforward, very simple. You can sync it, you can adjust where the air goes as well. Down here below in the center here, this is really, by the way, really solid, really great quality. This matte carbon looks absolutely amazing all the way around the car. You can just see how beautiful it looks. And the Bowers and Wilkins stereo system and the Alcantara on the headlining. Might be a bit hard to see in this light, but it looks amazing. So down here we have our controls, media, menu, map, nav, and your control wheel. You have our M gear stick here. This is automatic with manual shifters, our auto hold and parking brake. And then we have our M buttons, our M mode, our setup, our traction control off. And then in here we have our cup holders and a wireless charging with a USB down there. Unfortunately, I can't fit my phone into that space. If we tap this button here, it takes us through to our intelligent safety driving features and you can configure them or you can turn them all on. They should all be on in my opinion because that's the safest way to drive. Looking at the steering wheel here, we have our settings for cruise control, lane assist. We've got our volume and phone controls. We've got our M1 and M2 buttons, which have been configured. We've got paddle shifters here, which are nice. This is a, a thick steering wheel, BMW M steering wheel. It doesn't have a round button. It does have heated functionality, and it also has the M button there. Very nice leather with the BMW M stitching all the way around it. Down to the side here, you can see the light controls. And let's now have a look at the virtual cockpit or the BMW driver's display. You can see assisted driving pops up on there. You can see the speed limit. You can see your tachometer. You can see your revolutions per minute. And we can change this in the settings. Right, let's go for a drive in the M5 competition and see what it's like, how it handles, what it feels like. So the first thing that you'll notice is this has got really good suspension. It's a very comfortable car to drive, even though it is an M5. And when you put it into the harder, stiffer suspensions, I'm sure at that point it gets much more firm, but I just went over some big potholes and I barely felt them. So its origin as part of the 5 Series family is definitely there. You can feel it. There's no doubt that this is a car that can be in both camps. It can be the kind of car that you drive for relaxation, but also can become ferociously fast and exciting. And, you know, that's something which is, I think, attractive to everyone in any way. This car has all the safety features you could possibly imagine. It reverses itself if you park in a difficult place. 
It's enormously fast. And in this four wheel drive configuration, which the M5 has with BMW's X drive system, it feels very planted. It feels, feels like an Audi with four wheel drive. You know, that's my comparison. It's very, very planted. It's very, very solid. It knows where it is. It knows what it's doing. You don't have any concerns about its grip and its stability, which you shouldn't. This is a car with a lot of horsepower. So I'm now driving with all the safety assistant features on. I can see in the head-up display. I can see that my adaptive cruise control is on. I can see the lane keeping is on. I can see that um, I can see the speed limit. I can see in the head-up display. I can also see it down below. So this car has given me a lot of information. I can see on the dashboard in front the road I'm on. I can see I'm in four-wheel drive mode. I can see the gear I'm in, the temperature, information which you can see on, on lots of cars. But this is an M5. This is one of the fastest saloons you can possibly get. And it's giving me all of the safety and comfort uh, that I would expect in a 5 Series. Now, I'm not going to be uh, driving this car fast because of the weather conditions and because it's a new car and it's not my car. But, you know, I can feel just from driving along the power that it has and the way it feels and it handles very stably, very good. You know, I just changed lanes there. The blind spot assist on the mirror let me know that there was a car there. I could see it anyway, but it let me know. So, you know, I feel very safe and secure in this car. Plus I have this amazing widescreen Android Auto view, which you don't get very often. You know, and, and Android Auto in widescreen is something which has been a bit hard to get. People haven't been able to get it in cars. You can get Android Auto on lots of cars, but often there's no widescreen mode. So you have like a black bar and it just says Android Auto on the side. That's unusual. CarPlay in widescreen mode is very common. BMW has supported CarPlay for several years and it, you know, widescreen on their displays has always worked. But widescreen on Android Auto, no, it's not so much. So it's definitely something to, uh, to be happy about if you're an Android user. If you're an Apple user, then you're absolutely fine. And that ability to use a digital key is really fantastic and cool that you can do that now with this car. And with BMWs going forward. And again, you know, there's potholes on the road. I've got massive wheels. I've got massive tires. I can't feel them. I am in comfort mode now and efficiency. And I just feel like I'm driving a relaxing, car we've got auto start stop so you know it just stopped there at the traffic lights so i'm saving fuel and everything in here feels really high quality you would expect it to do so but it just feels really really high quality really nice the design interior design here with the alcantara i mentioned this before but the alcantara on the headlining and the matte carbon fiber on the inside of the doors and the dashboard is just a fantastic interior. I mean, there's even Alcantara on the inside of the, uh, the sun visor. So that feels really great. Driving along here, you can see the mode I'm in. I'm in efficiency mode. The car is aware that there are cars in front of me, there are cars around me, and you know, it's turned itself off. You can see it can tell that I'm over the white lines on the road that's because this road is a narrow road and there's cars parked on both sides but it can see exactly where I am in the car this is very Tesla-esque from my experience in the Model 3 you can see here it's showing me that there are cars on the other side of the road as I'm driving along here it's it, you know you can see there's cars parked there it's aware of where everything is as I'm driving along here <laughs> over the over the line which is why the uh, driving assistance features aren't kicking in right now because it's totally aware that I am uh, probably not where it wants me to be. That's what UK roads are like, they're narrow. That is the experience of driving in the UK. 
but you know it, it knows it can see it's happy it's comfortable we can turn the assisted driving back on now and you know now you can see it was telling me there hey look there's a car watch out for the car and I can see exactly the same information in my head-up display as well it's another car in front of me it's mirroring all of this information on the head-up display which is very cool and very interesting all right so let's turn this on again assisted driving on and now the car is steering for me there are some potholes on this road that I'm on that I can't drive over on my own car because they're just too they're just too big on my suspension on my car on my RS3 they just it just does not handle them at all so you know really really interesting how well this is handling again assisted driving features are on but the steering wheel is turning for me it's literally turning for me it lost the road there so what are my thoughts on the m5 competition it's a super comfortable car it's a super safe car it's got all the technology you could want in a car it has so much tech in the car it's unbelievable it's got reverse assistant it's got 360 degree cameras it's got really fantastic help with the steering when it tries to keep you in lane i mean it was steering me around a corner and you know it was it was steering me and i didn't have to do anything until it disengaged it's super super amazing with the interior the matte carbon i can only imagine that if you were to drive this car every day you would be very very happy it's a large car but it doesn't feel that large and you know i think that's got to do with the fact that you feel very planted you feel like you know where you are in the road you feel like wherever you are you know and the safety and assistant features help with that feeling as well they make it very easy to figure out where you are and if you're not sure you can tap on the camera and and see exactly where you are in relation to the rest of the road do i wish my drive today wasn't in the rain sure that would be nice then i could uh, have a more complete experience of this car but it doesn't matter this is an amazing car there's a lot of great technology there's a lot to love i can only imagine what it would be like if you were able to drive it a bit more spirited but within the confines of the law obviously i can't recommend this car enough because you don't have to buy an m5 there are other five series cars this is the new facelift 20 2021 version and so it's totally updated interior exterior technology from the previous model you can check it out for yourself at chandler's bmw helsham near eastbourne and see what you think of the car yourself they've been awesome so thank you again for letting me do this drive this review this tutorial of the technology in the m5 thank you to them please pay them a visit if you are looking for a new or used car i hope you enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe would you buy an m5 would you buy a 5 series would you buy a bmw i think there was definitely a time when bmw and mercedes lagged behind a bit in my opinion in the technology experience to audi and then you know everybody was behind tesla but tesla don't have android auto they don't have wireless android auto they don't have wireless carplay you know and for all the cool stuff that is in tesla cars it doesn't have an easy way for you just to connect up your phone bmw has that and it works really well so i have to give them a lot of credit this is a fantastic car and all BMWs are starting to get this technology and uh, hopefully I can have some more videos of other BMWs as well. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more coming from Tech in the Car. Thank you and stay safe.